I'm Jeannie Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and the founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here with Karen Tasto to talk about her article in the September-October issue of On Purpose Woman Magazine. Karen, hi, good morning. Thanks for being with me. Hi, Jenny. Honored to be here. So before we dive into this exciting um, article that you wrote, tell our viewers what you'd like them to know about you. Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm a Marylander and I have um, I am an empty nester with three older uh, young adult boys and a husband. And I'm a coach, a certified life coach and a circle facilitator. And my business is Open Heart Healing. You can find me at karentasto.com. And really, I guide clients and my circle members into uncovering their deepest truths and then supporting them in taking aligned, empowered actions so they're living a more intentional and fulfilling life. Yeah, and I really like to foster authenticity, help women embrace and, and really uncover their true essence, their core. And, and also I cultivate really soulful connections. You do. You do. Thank you. And as you're talking about your work, I'm struck by, and, and this isn't, this is, this is probably more common for the kind of women I surround myself with, who you're talking about how you help women while you're also in this process of doing this work yourself, mm -hmm. right? Because we're going to talk about something that you, that you just did, but we're not going to talk about <laughs> what you did. We're going to talk about the before, why you did it and leading up to it. And then we'll have another conversation at another date about the actual yeah. process. Which is hard doing. not to do, honestly. I bet it is. Well, if you Talk slip about in the during anything, actual, but I will, I'll hold back. <laughs> if, you slip, if you slip in, it won't be like that. Okay. You know, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. All right. So um, the article, what was that? More to come. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And we'll say more about more to come before uh, this interview is wrapped up. So Karen, you wrote about walking my path and here's how you started your article. In a few short weeks, I'll embark on a journey quietly calling to me, a pilgrimage on the Camino de Santiago in Northern Spain. It's a 200 mile trek I'll walk over two weeks, a physical and spiritual journey that has been a year in the making. And you began your walk on September 22nd, is that correct? Yes. So not that long ago, I mean, really, you went into October a little bit with that walk. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to even consider this pilgrimage? I know that you're, you know, you're athletic to some extent, I think, right? I mean, you, you yeah, seem like I see you climbing mountains with your sons and stuff. <laughs> so, but what inspired you to actually take this? Because it's a big deal. Yeah, well, actually, it wasn't the physical that that was inspiring me, that was calling me actually. It was really the, the spiritual. Um, the seed was planted a number of years ago. Um, a friend's, a good friend of mine's husband was actually doing it and um, he was actually a deacon. So um, he had his own reasons for doing it, but the idea of it and the hearing um, his preparation and all and, and about the journey really, um, it stuck with me all those years. And then when I, um, it, it was something that was far off in the distance, like, oh, one day, you know, it was that bucket list thing. One day I want to do that. And then one day in my, what showed up in my inbox was a newsletter from uh, someone that I follow. And she had mentioned, she went on this Camino and she did it with this guide and just had incredible things to say about it and I was like oh something just totally sparked in me and I reached out right away to this woman um, who leads um, people on the Camino and we immediately connected and it felt so right and that was actually two years ago um, yeah two years ago and uh, we talked about the timing you know what it would be like to have gone to do it in a year, but things were so uncertain um, with my mom who was ill. So I decided to delay it. Yeah. So it was then committing a year ago to, um, to this one. Okay. I think you also wrote in your article that it was your mom's passing that kind of inspired you to really 
get serious about it and to make that commitment. Is that, is that right? Yeah, it was something about like, um, I didn't mention this in the article, but about really doing something for myself that was way out there and really um, different for me. And that was, um, you know, really for myself. And that would put me in a totally different environment. And that really spoke to me. Um, and I had a lot of, lot of, pro lot of processing to do um, in all that had transpired in those years. Yeah. Um, my mom, so. You know, I never thought about it in that way before, about it's fully for yourself, but even the preparation, I mean, it can probably look a little bit selfish from the outside looking in, right? Oh, Karen's doing all this stuff and she's preparing and she's leaving her husband for like two weeks. You know, I remember the first time I went away for two weeks by myself, you know, my, my then mother-in-law, she was, she was still my mother-in-law if she were still alive, but she, she's no longer with us. But she said to my husband, is everything okay? You know, cause it was just, she, it was just unheard of in her world that a woman would go away, oh, yeah. not her husband for two weeks, but it can be, it's very self absorbing, isn't it? I mean, because that's all you're focused on, I imagine. I mean, you're still working yeah. with clients. You're still, you know, in a relationship with your husband and everyone else, but there's got to be this certain part of you that just says, this is my focus. You know, yeah, how do you, how do you honestly, that? like I have a really positive spin on selfish, you know, no, um, I do too, really. I that's why I put it in quotes. <laughs> like we need, women need more of that to, you know, yeah. be selfish. Um, to put themselves as a priority as first. And yeah, that, um, you know, I, I was just at the point in my life um, where it was, you know, it was much more accessible and easy. I wasn't leaving children at home. Um, my husband, you know, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. um, but yeah, and it was really, um, it just was this deep calling for me to do this. And I, Honestly, I didn't know really why I was doing it. You know, I knew, had my why. I conjured up my why. But um, you don't really know until you're on it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really excited to hear down the road what you discovered yeah, about that. Yeah. But you said you made the commitment about a year before. And so yeah. when did you actually begin to prepare? And what did that preparation look like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this, this guide, um, Michelle, she only takes, uh, you know, eight, she'll take up to eight. And that was, that's actually, um, like the max and a big group for her, um, uh, for this, but it, it was just making that commitment, you know, um, to make sure, first of all, that I got in, um, and I was actually the first one I found out on, while we were on the walk to that, I, that signed up, that committed. And, um, but also to, you know, just block out that time and nothing was going to get in the way of it. And so it was, and then it's that whole year of leading up to it. And of course, as it gets closer, your, my psyche is preparing, you know, as well as my body and, and then all the physical preparation. So it really began, um, four months before mm -hmm. so whatever that was early in the year okay um where it was um early june when um the training started so june july and august and into september um so we got the the those who signed up um we got a four-month calendar with just suggested where your miles should be, mm -hmm. you know, with each week and just building on that. So that was the physical um, of preparing your body to say yes, um, telling your body, yes, you're, this is what we're going to be doing, uh, walking and walking and walking. Uh, and uh, so it was a real gradual, it was real gentle. Um, it was nothing really new for me. You know, I already had a walking and hiking practice or exercise routine um but then as it got closer it was a lot it was a lot of um you know my Saturday and Sunday mornings were walking and I 
by then when the miles were stacking up, I couldn't get talk any friends into coming with me. <laughs> They've already done their thanks, stint, huh? No, thanks, Karen. <laughs> um, like five miles is my max. <laughs> yeah. Just what I would get. Um, Needed a tag team, right? That they, they could be doing different <laughs> things along the way. Right? That would have been nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the miles really stacked up um, in preparation in the, you know, the lead up. And it was, that was definitely a big commitment. Um, yeah. yeah. Sure. So devoting that much time to this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're right about getting caught up in the physical preparations, yeah. you know, which is certainly understandable because it's huge. It's a huge thing you're committing it to. Is. Here. It was. And that you were so focused on finding the perfect backpack and worrying about whether you were in shape enough to make this challenging path that you lost sight of the real reason you were going and you realized that you'd lost touch with your deeper calling. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. I was just starting to kind of spin out <laughs> um, in, you know, some anxiety and self-doubt, you know, like anyone would um, in and trying something so, you know, big and, and out there, out of my comfort zone. And it was, um, yeah, it just, you got, you know, and you just, there's so many details, you know, the, the logistics, the travel logistics, you know, before and after and, um, and then gathering all the gear and, and you do, you know, you do want to get, the guide gave us, you know, a lot of suggestions. I got to talk with her one-on-one -on -one with all my questions. And there's a lot of little decisions to make around gear. And there's so many options, like just walk in an REI and you see, <laughs> <laughs> I took many trips to REI. <laughs> um, you know, the shoes, it's like, I went through and I talked to the rest in the group, you know, we all kind of were going through the same thing, like tons of trying on tons of different shoes, you know, um, coming to the door and then returning them, trying them out and returning them because you wanted to set yourself up in the best way possible for, yeah. you know, the less pain and more comfort. And so it was a lot of those little decisions and questioning them. Do I have the right shoes and backpack? and mm -hmm. so forth so it was really easy to lose sight of you know the the deeper reasons that I was going and it did take um a coach to help me see where help me to see myself and where I was and what I needed so that was really pivotal um a conversation or in a session that we had and and then it was kind of like, it allowed me to step back, right? And as with any, you know, receiving any kind of support like that, uh, it really does take someone else to see what you're not able mm -hmm. to see yourself. Yeah. You know, so many examples in our lives, right? And then I was able to, you know, reconnect to that. Oh, why am I doing this? And I actually had the opportunity this um Earlier in the summer, my son, my middle son did a hundred mile ultra marathon and my, his brothers and my husband and I got to be there and be his crew. Right. And so that really, that stuck with me, you know, before and during the pilgrimage, because this was in my son's term, a through hike, <laughs> um, and you know you can't through hike is just a physical thing but there's also a really mental mindset and emotional and what happened with my son he got um 50 miles in and he was ready to quit mm -hmm. his feet were a wreck he was in so much pain as you can imagine it was mountainous terrain <laughs> you know going through water rivers and so forth and anyway he was ready to quit but there was a uh, the direct the crew member on from that organization sat down with him and asked him what why are you doing this what is your why what is your why mm -hmm. and so that I that stuck with me and I remembered that and it ended up he gave him this amazing pep talk and my son went on to finish it you know mm -hmm. so and did quite well 
but um, yeah, it's so important, you know, and, and I kept even during, you know, I know I'm going into during, but it was like, there were moments mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know if I can do this again. I can't traipse through the rain soaking wet another day. And then it was like, well, why am I doing this? You know? And then I was able to tap in back into my heart and, and it's like, oh yeah, I can do this. My physical body can do this. It was really the mental aspect. Yeah. You know, we're talking about a trek. We're talking about a pilgrimage. We're talking about your son's, <laughs> whatever you call that, <laughs> massive <laughs> like, like Iron Man thing. <laughs> and they're all such metaphors for life, aren't they? Yes. You know, and you're talking about, you know, trying on the shoes and you know, I'll have to take them back. They're not the right ones for me. You know, and, and what came to me is just that, you know, I know as, as a child, you know, it was not okay to have to make a lot of choices, to try things. You were supposed to stick to stuff. You know, if you got a pair of shoes and you like them, you better wear them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and I know that's a little tiny thing, but I was just struck by this. You know, we have to do that in life. We have to try things on. And if they don't work and they're not for us, we need to let them go, right? Right. And that there is no perfect. You right. can't get this perfectly, no. you know? Because <laughs> you, know, you would still be looking for shoes if you were looking for the perfect shoe, right? right. I still got... I still got blisters, even with what I thought were the right shoes, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Well, let's go back and talk about this idea of why, because you invited our readers to reflect on our own pilgrimages, because we're all on in some phase of a pilgrimage in life, whether it's a journey of healing, you say, a new venture, or simply navigating everyday life. You wrote that it's vital to pause and ask ourselves, am I staying true to my deeper why? Am I honoring myself at all levels, body, mind, heart, and soul? And you shared some what you call gentle reminders. I love you always approach things like this, Karen, with a gentleness. You don't want women who you work with, you know, I think you don't want to pile anything else on our plates that feels like a have to or a should. And so these are gentle reminders, something to consider to help us stay connected to our true vision and remind us that we don't have to do any of this perfectly. And the first one is to reconnect with our why. So talk about that. And did you come up with your why? Is there a, a one why or was it a a myriad yeah. of whys? Say yeah. a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, there were a couple whys. One of my, probably my biggest why was to connect with myself you know, a soulful connection with myself and with spirit. And so, and, you know, in the midst of it, it was really easy to lose touch with that. There was so much stimuli and you're with people and, you know, and so you're breaking, you know, I was, we were kind of, I got to walk, I walk, chose to walk alone a lot and I was with the group. So there was this flow, but so there's a lot to distract and what really um, my why was if my why if I kept I kept coming back to that and actually what helped me to keep coming back to that was ritual mm. so I yeah so um, but I won't talk about that um, but just having something tangible really can help um, you know, and that's what ritual is. It's taking the intangible and making it tangible. So, you know, a why can be really aloof and, you know, hard to grasp, um, you know, especially if it's beyond the physical. So having something like a ritual, a really tiny symbol or something, um, and using that through your journey, your inner journey or your outer journey whatever it is on your path um, can really help. It helps me to reconnect to that why. Mm -hmm. And and setting um, intentions too, right? We, we do that and we can do that in our daily life, setting an intention in the morning. And I did that, you know, on the, the pilgrimage too, um, whether it was, you know, my intention today is to connect more into my heart, to feel into my heart. And so that really helped me um, on those those harder days 
and 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 also at the same time to just be open and be in flow and not you know don't not to get into anything um attached to any outcome right mm -hmm. yeah that must be really challenging so, also yeah so it is challenging yeah and in and in the instance of my like my son or my coach like it really I believe it takes others right to help us stay mm -hmm. aligned and in tune with our whys with our visions oh I do too I do yeah. too it reminds me of, um, you know, I think about why do I still do what I do? You know, 25 years coming up in March of next yeah. year that I've been doing this community. I've been doing this work for longer than that even. But, yeah. you know, if I wasn't clear, at least when I think about it, it's not always there. But sometimes when I start to feel like, how much longer do I want to do this? Well, as long as I want to, <laughs> you know, and why? Because I still get so jazzed when I see a woman do something because she showed up and she, you know, she expressed herself and she's standing maybe a little taller than she did the first time I met her or just, or there's a connection that somebody makes with another person that really helps them flourish and bloom and all of that. So yeah, it doesn't have to be that big of a thing either. It can be a daily why. It can be, why did I get up this morning? You know, yeah. what, what's my intention for just my, how I show up in the world today? How you show right? up. Yeah. yeah. How do you yeah. want to show up today? Yeah. Love that. Awesome. And so the second point that you made is to trust, uh, let's see, you know, you balance preparation with presence. And you talked a little bit about that. While it's important to prepare, remember to stay present. So um, you want to say any more about that? Yeah. Well, as far as, you know, bringing this in pilgrimage into one's life, right? We don't have to go you know, across the ocean to be on pilgrimage, right. we can do it um, right here. And it's, you know, balancing that, that activity and that doing, especially, you know, with the, our businesses, um, balance that doing with checking in and being mm -hmm. and feeling. Um, so you're coming from the heart and the body and your own inner wisdom so it's, um, you know, having that more soulful life, soul filled life, yeah. soul centered life. <laughs> yeah. And everything that you're talking about, Karen, you know, what's coming up for me is that, you know, we can do all the preparation. We can yeah. do the preparation, what seems perfectly. It may yeah. not be, but it may seem perfectly. We could put all of our, all of our energy into it. And unless we've got something deeper driving the outcome may not be what we what we thought it would be. Do you agree with that? There's got to be something else there driving it. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, something else driving it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the third one, which I really like, is trust the uncertainty. It's okay not to have all the answers. You probably went with still with more questions than you had answers for, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and even post mm -hmm. pilgrimage, it's still it's I'm still questioning. It's still unfolding. You know, yeah. it's like what was that about? You know, and looking back. Um, so yeah, just it it's really challenging for any human to be to sit in uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I've been you know I'm I'm there you know over and over. Um, and it's building though, that those trust muscles and being open, you know, to whatever is to, to be revealed in that, um, you know, in the pilgrimage, um, I really, you know, I went into it, you know, with my, why my intentions and what, um, what I was hoping to get out of it. And, but really it was about being, you know, doing it during, it was about just trusting, you know, um, trusting in the encounters, you know, chant the encounters I had and the conversations I was having and like, what, what, what is that, you know, what does that have to say for me and, and all the experiences you know we just don't know you know we just don't know yeah. really <laughs> so what else can we do but trust it 
Mm -hmm. what else? And all the other things that you've talked about, uh, you can't have the experience you were just talking about unless you're, you know, you're at least in that moment, know why you're there, unless that you you're being present unless you're trusting, I mean, you can't have those conversations or you would have them and they would maybe not be the depth that they could be, or you wouldn't be fully present for them. So something would be missing. You know, you're concerned about yeah. how, many, how many more miles you have to go down the road, right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. there was certainly that too. <laughs> yeah. And I talk and breathe at the same time and walk. I mean, I'm sure that gets to be a, a point at some place, you know, but um, the last thing that you, that you mentioned for this, these four pieces is to honor your whole self. So what do you mean by that? Yeah, so it's really, um, you know, honoring all of your needs, all whatever they may be. It's honoring all parts of yourself, you know, even the parts that are uncertain, the parts that are doubting, that are scared, um, even while moving forward. And it's integrate, you know, integrating the shadows and um, as well as whole self, meaning the emotional, the physical, the energetic, the spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, and then it kind of cycles back, you know, we're honoring ourselves by reconnecting with our why. <laughs> it is. It's a loop, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, I want to say to anyone who's watching this, whether you're watching it live or the replay, Karen does share more in her article. You can find that at on purpose, <clears throat> I'm sorry, opwgc.com and then click on magazine. And that uh, link is in the text of this video, as in as is the link to Karen's website. And Karen, as I mentioned at the beginning, we didn't actually talk about your experience because you're writing an article for the January, February issue of On Purpose Woman. I was kind of nudging you to see if you could do one for this next issue. But then when you, I realized me and you said, I need more time to actually, I don't even know what I, I wouldn't even know what you would write about yet, right? So you need time to assimilate all of the... Right, yeah, too soon. Yeah, too soon. So I'm really excited that you'll be sharing that with us. And I also want to say that if you're in the Columbia Maryland area this Friday, 10 a.m. to noon at Nourishing Journey. And you can also find that information on my website under events or gatherings. Karen will be talking about this experience. So you can hear it there first if you're local and it's free for all women. So just show up and join us there. And Karen, how can our viewers find out more about you? Yeah, go to my website, Karen Tasto, T-A-S-T-O at or, dot com, Karen Tasto dot com. Uh, and feel free, you can also email me, uh, Karen at KarenTesto.com um, with, you know, any questions or interest or whatever is speaking to you and happy to connect. Hey, you have anything coming up you want to tell us about? Um, well, I'd like to invite any of the viewers into a couple things, into a uh, visioning session. Um, so a lot of this that we talked about today at, and, uh, you know, along my pilgrimage was about vision and holding that vision, aligning oneself, you know, to that why, to the truth. And so this is a, a private one-on-one -on -one session. Um, it's for a nominal fee and we would, we'll go really um, in depth and somatically into whatever it is that you desire and want to um, envision. So I'd love to hold that space for you. And I'll put the link, I guess, when it goes on Facebook. And so look there um, on Jenny on the website. And also, if you're in Maryland, um, feel free to reach out if you're interested in joining my next in-person gathering. It's here in Durwood. So I know this is a global community, but just might be someone that it might call to. Um, it's a Samhain fire circle. So, and that can be found on my website under retreats. And just for those Marylanders who don't know where Durwood is, because I didn't until a number of years ago, it's in Montgomery County. So it's close right. to yeah. a lot of us. So it's very it close, close to you know. 270 the Beltway. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Karen, as we wrap this up, do you want to share a final thought with our viewers? Mm. Yeah, I'll share like um, to know that 
it's the smallest things to in our daily lives that really make the difference and bringing more sacredness, more soulfulness into our lives. So it's seeing with soul eyes. Um, and that's really, um, you know, on the pilgrimage that really made the, a difference. And it feels like it awakened it even more in me. So seeing with soul eyes. Mm, I love that. Seeing with soul eyes. I'm going to keep that with me today. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your wisdom with us and your courage and your brilliance and your heart. I just, I love you. I love what you do. And I'm so oh, proud of you, you for Jenny. doing this. I love you too. <laughs> this has been fabulous. I'm so proud of you for um, taking us on this pilgrimage with you just a bit and look forward to knowing more about it. And I'm excited about that. Thank so you. thanks again for being with me today. Thank you, Jenny. And thank you for watching the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show. For more information on the On Purpose Women Global Gathering and Magazine, please click on the links in this video. And for more interviews with amazing women who are living their lives on purpose, check out our YouTube channel, which is also in the text of this video. Thanks again for watching.